Today in AP Physics, we're going to start Chapter 5. We're going to do just two classic examples of force vector problems. Now, okay, this is AP level difficulty. What's the name of this equation? It doesn't need an equal zero there. That's optional. They're going to call it by name on real free response problems. If you really take or when it counts, they're going to say use, they just mean this equation. They're going to say use blank. And if you don't start out writing something like that, what do you think, Ben? Oh, no. Even <laughs> We've got a lot of work to do. That's good, though. That's very brave. This is the second law. I know exactly. We don't remember, but they're going to call it that. Don't worry. You don't need to know what the first and the third law are. If they ask for a new law, it's always the second one, and it's this. Okay. The first law is pretty important, but it doesn't have an equation. It's just a thing that you know, and it's a thing I think we talked about last week. Things carry, carry on their motion at constant speed in a straight line. Okay, and the speed could be zero unless acted upon by a net force. Oh. But it's straight lines we talked about Friday, not circles. I did the whole circle spiel. And if you really, if you really understand that first law, things have to go in straight lines, then you realize, oh yeah, anything in a circle, anything that goes in a circle, that's not a straight line. That's the opposite thing in physics. You're either in a curve or you're in a straight line. And if you're curved, you must have some net force on you to accelerate you. Okay. Well, that's exactly what that says. For today, we're going to do the equilibrium problems, where we do have the sum of the forces equal zero. OK, just two nice examples. Uh, let's see. Oh, boy. And we talked about vectors. So all right. This first one, I told you they were classic. It's a block of mass m. We tend to draw the free body diagram right on top of it. Okay? And it's got a force of tension applied at an angle. What's our favorite angle? Let's make it 37. So that's 3.5. It could be any angle. Ah, let's see, you know what? What are we feeling like today? We want to know the angles? That's right, I have to read the room. How secure are you feeling? Are you okay with theta? It could be any angle? No, I want to know the angle. Okay, good. Just reading your faces. 37 degrees, so it's a three, four, five triangle. It's gonna be three on the y side, four on the x side, five. There, okay. It's got a force of tension. We do all our problems near planet Earth. So what other forces does it have to have on it? Way back. Geometry. Okay. It obviously has to have mg. Okay. If we want to give numbers, 2 kilograms is a reasonable one. So that means this is 20 newtons. Okay. <clears throat> if those were the only forces, it would like swing like this through the ground wouldn't it? We would just take our vectors from last chapter and we'd add them. But that's not what happens if I put a block on a table and start pulling it. What other force would we naturally have? Normal force. Okay. Array. The normal force. Is the normal force equal to gravity? Sometimes it is, but now it is not. Okay. It's the normal force. Normal is, is a code word for right angle. Okay, Isaac Newton probably had a different understanding of right and left. So he would say normal when he meant perpendicular. It's, it's, perpendicular. it's perpendicular to the surface that it's resting on, right? The surface can only exert a normal force perpendicular, but it exerts another force that's not perpendicular. What force could that be? What else can we say otherwise? Yeah, 
there's going to be a friction force back. Okay. So let's see. Let's see if we can make this realistic. How much tension? We just need to make it a multiple of five. How much tension should we put on our rope? And then we'll figure out what our coefficient of friction needs to be to keep our acceleration equal to zero. Hmm. Hmm. It's got to be less than. It's got to be less than twelve. Because no, no, no. It's got to be less than twenty. Nope. I'm thinking backwards. So what I'm thinking of is if I put enough tension on this this green vector, my y component could actually cancel gravity, in which case I don't need any normal force. If that's a mystery to you, we'll go with that. That's why I wanted to do this problem. Okay. Um, so I don't want this side of the triangle to be 20, but that's okay It's because it's the three side. Let's, let's make this also 20. That way I'm guaranteed to be less. So we pull the 20 newtons. That's only Okay, that's like, it's like a pound of force or something. It's pretty small. Okay. The thing itself only weighs, oh no. Yeah, that's about four pounds. So it weighs four pounds, and we pull with about four pounds. Fantastic. Okay. That's really all we need to know. We're going to solve. what mu, the coefficient of friction, and this would be mu s if we care. I usually don't. Oh no, it could be sliding. But what coefficient is our acceleration equal to zero? Okay, you'll often be given these problems equilibrium. Okay. This literally means the vector sum of all the forces divided by the mass, which is usually given, adds up to zero. Okay. Well, I need two pages. Let's vector split this one. Okay, if the length of this vector is 20 along the side, then we're going to have in the x column, 20 times the cosine of 37. And by 37, you know I mean 37 you know I mean 36.87, so it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Right? And why am I so obsessed at doing this stuff? Okay, because they tell you on the front of the equation sheet what angles they're going to use and what sines and cosines they want for them. Really, you don't need your calculator. Like they pick from those nine angles, and they just use those. Because you can do, you got 45, you got a little bit more, and a little bit less. And there you go. That's all you need. 30, 60, 90, 37, 53. That's all you need. Stay with me, Peter. Did you figure it out already? If you're an ace from last year, you can solve this already. Right? And if you're not, <laughs> you better pay attention. Okay. So my force of tension vector has two components. It's going to be 16 newtons and 12 newtons. Those are periods. Okay. If this is going to add up to zero, then I've got to have other vectors canceling out. Okay. So rather than write the big algebra equations, because I could, that could be a different video. Uh, we'll just do, we'll just kind of do a table. In the y direction, I bet I have to have minus 20 from gravity. Just make a note to the side, that's your force of gravity. So then I must have, because I have some of my forces equal zero, 
acceleration is zero, I've got to have plus 8 newtons as my normal force. Does that make sense? Gravity is always down, normal force is up, but normal force is just the remainder. Like the, the floor supports the block or ourselves as much as it needs to. Right? If we start pulling ourselves up on something, if we lift ourselves up off the floor, we actually weigh less. If you ever stand on the bathroom scale and accidentally like lean on the countertop and your weight suddenly starts going down on the scale, you can try it at home. Okay? You'll seem to weigh less, but actually instead of the scale supporting your full weight, now the countertop is. Okay? Same deal. Okay? The, the tension in the rope is lifting some of the weight, 12, but it really weighs 20, so there must be 8 supported by the floor. Okay, we're pulling pretty hard here. Okay, and then it's being pulled to the right by 16. Uh-oh, I don't know. I don't know. If... That's right, there's the only horizontal forces. So if this is going to add up to zero, oh no. This is not physically possible, but you get the idea. My force of friction must be negative 16, because there's no other horizontal forces to get zero. Okay. And force of friction, oh, what's it say? This is also on the equation sheet, so if you don't feel bad if you are not being able to pull this out of your head. Okay. It makes sense. Doesn't it? Uh oh. I'm looking for the, yeah, you do. Okay. It even has F sub F. It has an absolute value. So on the equation sheet, it's got absolute value brackets. It says the magnitude of the vector force of friction is always less than or equal to the coefficient of friction, little mu, times the magnitude of the normal force. Okay, I like to clumsily write. Oh, and I can see how that would be confusing. So this is one, two, three, four. This is the eighth equation down on the equation sheet. <coughs> Let's see. I just draw a picture for a free body diagram or think about it now. But if you forgot, completely forgot friction from last year, you should know that friction opposes motion, right? So if I had no friction, I just had gravity and I was perfectly smooth, like an ice, icy skating rink surface, and I pulled this block at an angle, well, it wouldn't fly up because I'm not pulling as much as it weighs, right? Or I am, but I'm pulling at a weird angle. Okay, um, so it would just slide forward and, and accelerate faster and faster. I have a net force to the right. Okay, so friction tries to stop that motion uh, when there is friction. And so there you have it. Now, my normal force is only eight. So if little mu is just a number. It's really a percent. What percentage? of the normal force becomes friction, well, equals the magnitude of the force, yeah, the magnitude equals the magnitude of the force of friction, aha, uh -huh, that's why I need those magnitude bars there. Okay, uh, it must be two, right? The only way this stays in place, I just deselect my, yeah, I did. So write on your paper, mu equals 2. I think I'm going to have to save this and uh, <laughs> do the next one. <laughs> <laughs>